It's a morning ritual that plays out all across the land. It's the same in every town. It's the same for every student. And for 40 years, it's been the same here, too. But once these kids pass through that door, everything about this school is different from all the others. Because it has to be. In this nation, 35% of students with learning disabilities drop out of high school. And only 13% ever get a shot at college. At lab school, our kids range from low average intelligence up to superior intelligence. They've got the equipment to think. But they have these nuisances that make it hard for them to read, write, do math. So many of them have memory problems, coordination problems. If you don't have memory, if you don't have eye-hand coordination and you can't write, traditional education doesn't work. Here at lab, it's a whole other approach than I have the answers and you will learn them if you can have the memory to repeat back what I've just said to you. That's not how lab school works. What's really important is for our kids to think and not think in terms of right or wrong, but think original thoughts. But the way we get them to that point is through the arts and it's through life experiences and it's through project learning. The role of the arts being totally central. You know, there are a lot of people in this country that think arts are something very fuzzy and you know, people who are artsy are not really academics. But if you go into any art form, in any depth, you are dealing with scholastic material. If you go into art in depth, you get into mythology, to literature, to science, to history, to geography, to all sorts of academic subjects, even ethics. <laughs> Well, it really came about because I have three sons and my youngest one was severely learning disabled and had all kinds of problems. We had these birthday parties and now I know they were multi-sensory and experiential. I didn't know at the time, I just had fun parties. Everything we did at those parties, he learned. And I thought, I've got to use this. And when I started using it, he started remembering. And so it taught me to pick up on what he could do and put what he needed to know into that. And then I found that people were dropping their children at my home, saying, do that with my child. And I kept saying, well, do what? They said, well, what you're doing with him? Because he can remember things now. But I had to think it all through. I did it out of gut first. Because a club means membership, belonging. But we don't have recipes for these clubs. It's a way of thinking. From the darkness of the Middle Ages comes the light of the Renaissance. What we're finding is that some of our kids who've been through a number of these clubs are way ahead of their peers in history, geography, civics, even in, in certain aspects of science and literature. And then, you know, in the junior high, it's a club approach. It's not the club itself. There's a joy that we want them to have about learning. A joy that will go with them the rest of their lives. And sometimes people say, but that's really not very rigorous. But it is indeed rigorous. Our kids are on all day long. You 
can't hide in the back of the room with the laps. You know, there's some people that think something's wrong if a child's enjoying learning. We have a few parents that say, I'm, I'm a little worried about how much he likes it. Most parents are thrilled that the children love it and want to come to school. But there's some that worry because is it too much play? But play is children's work, and it gets us into the deep academics. And that's why we have to use it. So many of them have been written off as unable to learn. And one of our huge jobs is to bolster their self-esteem, to make them feel good about themselves, to make them feel that they matter, they count, and that they have something to contribute. Our night school students often can tell us what the students cannot, how rotten they felt in school, what made them feel hopeless and give up trying. Their whole life was a chorus of try harder. They were trying their hearts out and it didn't work. It's fine to say we're arts-based and to think that that's without textbooks. No, no, no. It starts out that way, but in order for our kids to get into good colleges, they have to know how to use textbooks. They have to be able to take tests. They have to be able to write essays. And we're happy that 92% of our kids go on to college, and we have more and more going on to graduate school, and now we even have some doctorate students. Well, I'd like to see more lab schools all around the country. We've been invited to Egypt, to India, and uh, to Saudi Arabia, but I wanted to do America first. But we're happy that Baltimore will have its first graduation in 2008. We had a school developed like ours in Philadelphia. It's called the Academy in Maniung. In Wilmington, Delaware, they want a charter school based on lab school. And that's very exciting. And there's something magical in the air. The kind of people we have, the kind of programs we have, the art. We do really magic with children, but magic with a very solid base of knowledge. <laughs>